What's up everybody? Recent data has come out that shows in 2023, the housing market hit its lowest point in 28 years when it comes to existing home sales. That brings us back to 1995, way before the global financial crisis, which was caused by the housing market crash in 2008. In December of 2023, existing home sales were down 1% from November to a seasonally adjusted annual rate of 3.78 million, according to the National Association of Realtors, and down 6.2% from the year previous. Even during the 2008 housing bust, home sales weren't as weak as they were in 2023. Holden Lewis, a senior writer on mortgages at NerdWallet, said in a statement shared with Fortune, this is not due to lack of demand, but rather lack of supply. Inventory levels are 36% lower than pre-pandemic levels, according to Zillow. And I have more news for you, which could make the housing market even worse, especially for first-time buyers. Blackstone has just acquired Tricon Residential, a Toronto-based landlord that owns 38,000 homes across the United States for $3.5 billion which means less homes for individual buyers and more money for institutional investors. So today we'll take a look at an article by Sydney Lake and Alina Botros for Fortune titled, Did the housing market just hit a bottom? New data reveals home sales hit their lowest point in 28 years in 2023, as well as an article by Lance Lambert for Resi Club titled, Blackstone doubles down on the US housing market with acquisition of Tricon and its nearly 40,000 homes to see how this affects the future of our housing market. So let's dive right in. At the end of December of 2023, there were only 1 million existing homes for sale compared to the 1.39 million in 2019, Lewis said. Low inventory levels have been particularly tough on millennials and other younger buyers, right? MLS chief economist Lisa Sturdivant said in a statement shared with Fortune. There is just 3.2 months of supply in the housing market, she adds, while a balanced market typically has four to six months of supply. A lot of this was due to the lock-in effect where potential sellers we're choosing to stay where they are rather than give up their super low mortgage interest rate to then go buy something with a much higher rate. But this does seem to be easing. If you watched last week's video, we went over some data provided by Redfin that shows that more homeowners are foregoing their low interest rate and starting to sell. Unfortunately, this may not be enough to create more inventory, especially if institutional investors are starting to ramp back up and buy single family homes taking properties off the market for individual home buyers and putting upward pressure on home prices and rents. Institutional investors, due to their significant resources, can acquire homes in bulk, depleting the supply and making it even more difficult for buyers, especially first-time buyers, to buy a house. They generally buy in cash, making it virtually impossible to compete with, and then turn around and either rent them out at a premium or quickly resell them for a profit. Lambert reports that back in 2019, Blackstone pulled back from the single family space as it fully divested from invitation homes, which Blackstone had used in the years following 2012 to gobble up homes for dirt cheap following the housing market crash. Then in 2021, Blackstone Real Estate Income Trust bought Home Partners of America for $6 billion which at the time owned 17,000 US homes. As we all know, 2021 was the year of historically low interest rates and the pandemic housing boom. Low rates coupled with soaring home prices and rents caused an institutional investor home buying frenzy. Tricon Residential was one of the investors that piled on during this frenzy adding net 2,441 homes alone in the second quarter of 2022. The institutional side of the market saw a huge boom during the pandemic, Lambert said in a podcast on X, formerly known as Twitter. There was a frenzy, low interest rates, home prices were ripping, rents were ripping, there was easy access to capital. It was really a perfect storm for capital flowing into the single family housing market. 
As rates started to rise dramatically in 2023, institutional investors slowed down. According to an analysis conducted by Johns Burns Real Estate Consulting, institutional investors, which they qualify as those that own more than 1,000 homes, bought 90% fewer homes in January and February of 2023 than they did in January and February of 2022. Once rates spiked, the math was less enticing for the institutional players, Lambert said. We've seen a big pullback in institutional buying, and there are a good number that have more dispositions than acquisitions. Now in 2024, after Blackstone buys Tricon and it's nearly 40,000 homes, it will be one of the three single family rental giants with American Homes for Rents, which own 59,092 single family homes at the end of the third quarter of 2023, and Invitation Homes, which own 84,697 single family homes at the end of the third quarter of 2023, as the other two. So how does this affect the everyday buyer in today's market who is hoping to achieve the American dream of home ownership? According to Holden Lewis from NerdWallet, there are plenty of renters that want to buy a house. The slow pace of sales can't be blamed on lack of demand. There are plenty of renters who wish they could own, he told Fortune. Rates have started to come down, which should make housing more affordable, but not unless inventory increases at the same time, especially for the younger buyers. Home ownership rates for this group remain lower than they were for prior generations, which indicates a significant level of pent-up demand, said Lisa Sturdivant, chief economist for Bright MLS. Prospective home buyers have been shut out of the market by a lack of inventory. If there had been more listings on the market in 2023, we would have had more home sales. One train of thought is that more sellers will put their homes on the market this year, creating much needed inventory. In fact, Lawrence Yoon, the chief economist for the National Association of Realtors, expects home sales to improve this year. The latest month's sales look to be the bottom before inevitably turning higher in the new year, Yoon said in a release. Mortgage rates are meaningfully lower compared to just two months ago, and more inventory is expected to appear on the market in upcoming months. Lewis agrees. If interest rates continue to fall this year, more people will list their homes for sale and we will see a healthy rise in sales. And while this all may be true, I am just not convinced that a lot of sellers will forego their below four interest rate, which a lot of them have, to then go buy something at a much higher rate. Then again, maybe the sellers will choose to rent after selling. Home prices are still really high, so they could make a healthy profit if they bought before the pandemic. And with the institutional investors starting to gall up all the inventory again, looks like there's gonna be a lot of rentals. But at what cost? If you think a housing market crash will create opportunity for more individual buyers to achieve home ownership, you are severely discounting the power of the institutional investor. I'm not trying to be an alarmist, but I do think we should keep an eye on the black stones of our country and pay attention to the trends in our markets. As we know, real estate is very localized. And according to Lambert's article, on a national level, institutional home buyers, which like I said, they qualify as those owning more than 1,000 homes, aren't massive players yet. They only own around 1% of the single family stock, according to Parcel Labs. That said, institutional investors are more prevalent in certain markets. 36.8% of all institutionally owned single family homes are located in six markets, according to Parcel Labs, Atlanta, Charlotte, Dallas, Houston, Phoenix, and Tampa. Let's end the video with a few current data points from the latest housing market update by Redfin. As for the four weeks ending January 14th, new listings are up 7.8% from a year ago and active listings are down 2.4% from a year ago, the smallest decline since June. Pending sales are down 3.1% from a year ago. 25.1% of homes sold in the first two weeks, which is exactly the same as a year ago. Median days on the market is 44 days, down two days year over year. 23.2% of the homes for sale sold above the list price up from 21% a year ago. And 3.9% of the homes did have a price drop, up 
0.2 points from a year ago. So once again, all this data tells me is that in most parts of our country, we are still experiencing a seller's market. And I'm sure it's because of lack of inventory. I hope you got some value out of today's video. If you did, consider giving me a thumbs up and subscribing to our channel. It just motivates me to make more videos. And if you missed last week's video, we did go over the data that shows how the lock-in effect is easing, which could create more inventory. So definitely check that out next. Thanks for watching. I do appreciate it. Bye.